David, uh, we'll begin with that SAP story, I guess, Jim, and start asking ourselves whether that is something that is uniquely European or something bigger, for, especially for mega cap tech. I'm very much struggling with what SAP had, uh, the reasons for its very dismal outlook. Uh, taking it back a couple of years, frankly, you could argue that this stock is still too high at these prices, which is down substantially, down 20 percent. They're talking about a cloud slowdown. Can we just understand that cloud has accelerated every business that is in its space except for SAP? Now, it's very possible that when you upload an SAP uh, program into the public cloud, SAP does far less for you. Remember, you, you can't, they're, they're someone who facilitates going from the private to the public. You know something? I've got to tell you, Carl, this one stinks. I mean, I had the previous, <laughs> it does. I had the previous CEO, on, uh, there was a co-CEO, uh, Ms. Morgan. And do you know that she, three weeks after she was on, she was no longer the, the co-CEO. Uh, the management terminal here ever since Bill McDermott, uh, who is now at ServiceNow, is disconcerting. So I find uh, their uh, reasons for their decline quizzical. And if you think that they are truly, truly an arbinger of a decline for cloud, I can challenge that directly. I just don't think they stand for anything other than an inability to convert. Uh, I think that their reasons are really uh, specific to SAP and not the broader brush that they're painting. 117, I, it deserves to be down that low. It really truly does. Well, Jim, you're answering the question that many people are asking this morning, at least you're, with your sense of it, which is, is it in some way indicative of a broader slowdown and therefore going to impact other companies, or is it specific to SAP? You clearly have just indicated you believe it is specific to SAP, yeah, not I mean, I, reflective I, I, of something that the market needs to take a greater account of. They were citing what, I mean, muted revenue. By the way, the, the call just began, uh, right. it's a European company, but the call just began 9 a.m. Uh, so we may get more off of there, although we did have an interview on CBC Europe with the CEO already, and we can sort of, uh, in fact, let's take a listen, guys, to, to, uh, to what Mr. Klein had to say in, in terms of where his focus is despite what, again, is this near-term guidance that is not particularly good, both on revenues and on margins. As the CEO of SAP, I have to be focused on the long-term value creation of this company. So I cannot trade the success of our customers and the significant revenue potential of SAP against short-term margin optimization. So, Jim, margin's also going to be under pressure here. Look, a lot of what they're talking about is giant push-outs. I mean, uh, uh, numbers, they're looking about, about things being pushed out dramatically. 20, uh, 2023 to 2025, uh, uh, remember, they, they bought Concur uh, for $8 billion in 2014. That happened to be a very good company. What do they do? They keep track of your T and E. Well, what business has slowed dramatically? T and E. I also think that, you know, they're spinning off Qualtrics. That's been very, very quizzical. I, I don't understand uh, what happened with this co-CEO to CEO management turmoil. I also don't understand why they didn't, they certainly didn't signal this whatsoever. Um, I think they had ample opportunity to signal it and they didn't do it. That's one of the reasons that, that we're uh, overwhelmed by this this morning. But to me, this is, this is not just share loss, but it is an inability to be able to make a client uh, who moves up to public cloud give them as much money. So in, in many ways, they sowed their seed to their own destruction. And I use the word destruction not lightly. This was a truly terrible quarter, but I do think it was intrinsic to them because how many companies have we had on air which just said, that, you know what, the pandemic has accelerated digitization, say, from three months or three, two years uh, down from 10 years. Uh, David, the digitization thesis, which is that the cloud uh, com combined with the pandemic has just been a boon does not uh, ring true with SAP, right. but it does ring true with every other, including Oracle, obviously Salesforce. Yep. Uh, it, I just don't get it. And yep. to me, I'm not saying they're losing share yeah. uh, because they, they've kept their core clients. I am saying that when they move them up, it's not as lucrative as other companies when they move them up. You know, SAP moves up move, to hand. Move them up. And you, know, you should explain to people what you mean by that. Um, well, you know, what happens is you get a situation where you have a company that's on-prem. On premises. Yep. And they move up, which to makes sense, right. to uh, the public cloud. Right. Once they're at the public cloud, they can work with HANA, which is the, the analytic system that, that SAP has. But most companies that move to cloud, cloud, you know, what do they use? They use Snowflake. Right. And so Snowflake is considered. Or what is a burgeoning group of other data analytics 
uh, companies and software that they can use, Jim, which right. are companies we talk about all the time, which goes back to this idea of the acceleration of, people, of companies moving to the cloud and then the opportunity that is there for the likes of Snowflake. Right. So, so, Carl, what this says is I think it's a false tell. I mean, I came in here today, and I've, I've been working on this stupid thing since 3.30. If only just, I mean, just looking at the <laughs> futures, you think the future's okay, and then SAP makes everything fall apart. But I thought the market should have focused, focused on Dunkin' Donuts, because here's been a red-hot stock doing incredibly well, and then gets a bid anyway. I mean, holy cow. I mean, if we just focus on Duncan, what does it say about so many of our stocks that have actually been doing well? Matthew Boss this morning talking about, you know, talking about PVH doing much better. Um, I see a contour upgrade from sell to buy. The whole process of being casual at home, another positive thesis. So yep. I'm seeing too much good, not enough bad to let SAP call her this morning. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.